Okay, so Jenny and I are going to talk about SYO's development program. Uh, our development program has been running for about 10 years now, um, and it's been very junior and family focused. Um, and I'm just sharing with you here the proportion of juniors in SYO compared to the national average, which shows the impact it's had. Okay, also useful, I think, to share our membership figures. Um, our development programme started in 2013, and you can see there quite a low proportion of juniors compared to senior members. Um, and then you can see the impact that our development programme had with growth in membership. Um, I started my club development officer role in 2014. Um, and then we had a period of quite rapid growth. Um, from 2017, we changed our focus to be more on making our club members more active rather than just growing membership. Um, and that was a deliberate attempt to, to, to not really grow membership at that point. And I think since that period, our junior membership has stayed pretty static because we've been really focused on families, getting adults and juniors involved. Um, 2017 was when we started our club night. Um, you can see we had a bit of a growth actually during COVID times. We were very active as a club whenever we could be in that time and a lot of people joined. Then we had a bit of drop off when everything got back to normal. Um, but since midway through 2022, we've been really focused on promotion and development and promoting our Saturday series. And that has transferred to a growth in membership since 23. OK. All right, so um, useful to share what I believe are the principles of a successful club development programme. Um, you need to attract new people to the sport through a newcomer focus series. And then you need, once you've got those people interested in the sport, you need to promote club membership and sell the benefits of join, joining. And in general, benefits of joining a club are the social opportunities, volunteering, um, how we train, value and encourage those volunteers. Um, we need, you need to give people a reason for joining. Uh, Coaching, we want to get people better at the sport, and that's catered for all ages and abilities. And we can provide fun competition and encourage people to join major events. And it's a real focus is to make the club members who join active, not just somebody who's a member of the club that doesn't do anything. OK, so why did SYO focus on juniors? Um, we believe that eight to 12 years is the easiest target. Parents are looking for new activities for their kids. Um, they can be quite persuasive for their kids at that age. They've got control over them. Um, and it's a good sport that they can do together. Um, and then separately, as juniors get older, you're not just watching on the side of a football pitch or in a, a swimming gala. You can actually get involved. And lots of families who've joined the club have said that's one of the things that really attracted them to the sport. And if we get a new junior to join, then we can often get the whole family to join. Um, so, as I said, it's not really a junior focus, it's a family focus, that the, our development programme. OK, over to me. Um, one of the things we've found is that selling orienteering is quite easy to this age range and particularly to their parents as well. It really appeals to the kids because they're getting out there often on their own where they might not get that opportunity at the age of eight, nine, ten to run around their local park um, with their friends rather than with their parents. Um, we've, we've talked to the juniors in our club and these are the sort of words that are coming out from them. Um, what they enjoy about it, what they what what orienteering is to them. Um, so I don't know a little bit. It's got a really good image in Sheffield, but all these things are what orienteering is. We all know that. Um, so it's just a matter of making sure you let other people know. Um, as Pauline mentioned, we have a what we call the Saturday series, and it's actually in its tenth season this year. Um, it used to be called the Schools League. And it got a rebrand 
um, I think it was 2017, I think. Yeah, 2017, um, to make it more attractive to the whole family um, and to not just to juniors, but it does always incorporate the Schools League event. Um, and at the last event, which was the beginning of January, even before schools had gone back in Sheffield, we had 155 runs on the white course. So we, we are attracting a lot of, of kids. Um, and then often they run more than one course. They're encouraged to do that. Um, often it's a chance for their parents to have a go as well. And, young, you know, younger siblings that are maybe a bit too young to orienteer really go around as well. So that's all. It's really accessible. Um, um, yeah. I mean, we really focus on it being at the the same time, the same format, so they know exactly what they're expecting when they come. And the, the courses are really short, like the white course has a five minute winning time because that makes it achievable for everybody. Some people might take half an hour, but the winners are doing five minutes. Uh, um, that just really seems to work. Um, and we also do um, always have adults courses and they tend to be urban courses that leave the park. Um, and we advertise them specifically as courses for adults. And one of the things to note is that it's not a schools league in the traditional sense. Like the schools don't have to be that involved. Um, it's the parents that bring the kids along. We very rarely see any any teachers from the school, but that's fine. Um, and I think that helps a bit with the club development because the parents are the people that are going to have to bring their kids to events eventually anyway. Um, yeah, we have minimal rules. Um, like I said, people can run another course, they can rerun courses, it's all encouraged. We always have people there to meet and greet. So before they even get to like the registration table, there's people there to help them if it's their first event or even if it isn't, just to um, let them know which course they should run and, and just being really, really friendly. So that's really nice. Um, and we often have things like a cake stall or a secondhand kit stall. And um, yeah, we, we're going to come on to what we do about promotion and celebration later but every year at the start of the year when schools start we print hundreds of flyers that go out to as many people as possible and they just have the dates on and people can just stick them on the fridge door and write them on the calendar and that seems to work really well. Yeah we end the series with a big prize given event um, which is um, where we basically try and give prizes and certificates to as many people as we possibly can um, which really does seem to encourage uh, participation. So these are the main reasons why someone would want to join SWO. These are the reasons we give um, and people have given us. So we have a weekly club night. We'll go through these in more detail in a minute. We have a really cool kit, we think anyway. <laughs> you can see it on the picture. I'm sure you've seen it at events. Uh, we have socials that people can come to. We have the promotion and celebration that we talked about. Um, what I've said already about the image of the sport and, and the club, it, it has a good image in Sheffield. We get involved in a lot of events um, like the Cliffhanger Outdoor Festival, Sheffield Adventure Film Festival. Um, people see it as part of the outdoor city offer alongside climbing, mountain biking, bow running. So we're in there. Um, another reason is for the junior only competitions. So people can run for the club and also for the, for the other competitions like the Come Sport Cup and the relays. People need to be members, obviously, and then junior development as well. So we've got, you know, a whole group of people that come along to the Schools League and then we get them to join, hopefully. So Paul, you mentioned earlier that Club Night was relaunched for SYO in 2017 and really took on board the importance of the fun and social side of it. They hadn't been so successful the first time around Club Nights, but, but they're really popular now. I think we... I think we did some back around 2009, 2010, but um, they, they weren't, we didn't quite get the uptake. And I think that was because we didn't have the people to uh, attract to club night. Mm -hmm. um, the, the new people that we got into the club via the schools league um, were up for club night. Yeah. And, and, and that's what's made it successful. Really. They love having a Wednesday night activity to bring <laughs> their kids to. Um, and a lot of the parents join in as well with the so it's it's for all ages starting from eight years old it's really inclusive um there are groups um the groups tend to be by age rather than ability for the juniors because it's more about them having a good time with their peers 
um, than how good they are at orienteering and they can pick that up from each other so it's really helpful anyway. We, the, we have a variety of different courses and activities so the juniors can pick what's right for them but we wouldn't you wouldn't want if you were 16 to be in a group with someone who's 11 so we really do try to sort of keep them more or less by age. And we have a lot of, a lot of groups of club nights so it's, yeah. it counts yeah everybody can access it. I think one of its successes is that it's a really non-pressured environment in which you can improve and learn new skills and um, improve your physical fitness. Yeah I'd say we get about last night we were at high stores and I think we probably had about 70 or 80 about 80 people there last night of all ages and we had the sessions we were doing were intervals we were doing micro orienteering in the hall. We had a question and answer session for new parents in the classroom. And then another uh, session in the classroom, looking, doing some race analysis and looking at the uh, events uh, from last weekend that SYO ran. So a real range of activities catering to all the different age groups. Yeah, and through the winter, every few weeks, it is based at High Stores School. So there's that con- continuity. And then once a month, we have an event um, that often has a meal after it as well um, and then the other weeks we go to different areas every week so it's really exciting for people. Um, after Covid we'd lost our um, sort of younger girls, our older teenage girls had kept going but we not because we hadn't had the schools league we'd not managed to co- encourage in the new younger girls um, so then I had a a concerted effort to try and recruit some more so I personally invited girls who'd come to our schools league and encouraged them to join and that was and asked them to bring their friends and that was really good so now we've got a great sort of eight to eleven years old girls group that Jen looks after yeah so okay so moving on to the club kit um the juniors just love our O tops and they are like it says here desperate to get their hands on them um, and we sometimes sell them at the second hand kit sale to families that haven't joined yet so um, we, <laughs> we often remind them that maybe they should um, uh, but yeah the hoodies and the jackets are really popular too people want to be part of something they like it we also have a junior only top um, we have a, a mascot we have a B mascot that comes to the events with us and um on the webinars and uh yeah as you can see in the picture there they like the face paint and the nails and really feeling like a team it was really nice that we have baker trophy last year because there were quite quite a few of the clubs were doing the same thing and it was it felt great i think for the yeah. for all the juniors so, um but yeah uh then we have socials so we have quite regular social gatherings that are open to all ages um, annually, we have the Club Champs with the AGM, which always has a, a meal. The AGM's as short as possible. And then there's a prize giving, which is <laughs> quite lengthy, but there's lots of time to chat as well. We have a summer barbecue and then the monthly of evening events with a meal as well. So as well as that, there's social opportunities at Club Night. Um, we'll come to the quotes from juniors later, but all of them mentioned how much they enjoy meeting up with friends at Club Night and having the chance to chat. And then um, we do encourage car sharing and when um, the Yvette Baker or the British schools are a long way away, organising and coach as well. So we mentioned how we promote and celebrate. Um, so we do use social media. We've got um, South Yorkshire and Tears Facebook page and an SYO Facebook page. So the South Yorkshire and Tears is kind of the open facing one to the public. public. Yeah. And then SYO is for members of the club really. Um, and then we also use we've, Instagram and it, we have a little jun- a junior page on Instagram as well yeah. as the main one. The Instagram's really important for engaging with the young young people because they don't use Facebook. Um, so uh, Instagram's where we promote events and sh- celebrate success, more junior focused in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but Facebook's good for parents. Yeah. and older people and facebook's great because you can share it into other um groups so there's a like south yorkshire outdoor mums group that i always share the schools lead, uh, the saturday series into um yeah just share it in as many parenting groups as possible so that's quite good um 
we do the flyers, uh, particularly for the Saturday series, and we have one that's um, kind of got information about starting orienteering as well that we give out to people that are interested. Um, we take the flyers to the first schools cross country of the year as well and give them out to like everyone as they finish to try and attract new people, people that like running around in mud already. So that works quite well. Um, we, I mentioned earlier the events like Cliff Hanging and Shaft. Sheffield is trying to set itself up to be like the outdoor city. So we, we're lucky that we do have quite a lot of events happening that we can tag along with. And they're usually really keen to have orienteering because it's often the most fun activity, particularly for the kids at the event. They're um, keen to have free activities that yeah. people can try. So um, maze and mini little orienteering courses seem to work really well. We always do it for free, so um, it works well. But yeah, we, so we collaborate with Outdoor City, with Sheffield City Council, um, and with the Move More programme. Um, with the prize giving, we try and get some elite athletes along to give out prizes. So we've had club members, but we've also, um, we've had, uh, as it says there, GB athletes. We got Charlotte Ward along to one of our Saturday series events because we're still struggling a little bit with um, the number of girls that we're encouraging versus boys. So it was really great to have Charlotte along with her medals, talking to everybody. At the British Schools Prize giving last year, um, oh no, 22 now, um, I think we had three or four GB athletes, plus Laura from New Zealand, plus and Mary. not Mary from Australia. Yeah. So it was great. Um, I see them all there in their national kit, giving out the prizes. Um, and when we do do prize games, we, we do try and make sure everyone gets up for a prize, basically. Um, so, yeah, we mentioned those personal invitations. They can be really helpful. And then, yeah, um, so SYO send out regular emails to all members, but there's also emails from the junior club captain um, that go out to parents, kind of sometimes explaining. So if an email goes out about events that are coming up, there'll also be one explaining how to enter something like the Yorkshire Champs and make sure your juniors get in the right category. Uh, and if someone's new and not sure, we might sort of send a personal invite, say, oh, have you thought about coming to the Compass Book Cup final? Have you thought about coming to the Yvette Baker? Or what about coming to run in a relay? Um, personal invites go a long way to encouraging those people. So as we've said, Orienteering does have a really good image in Sheffield. Um, We've mentioned the collaboration and the social media and the kit. It all is part of that. It just seems like a quite a fun, a, a racing sport, you know. Um, it's got that image. And um, people see it. If you go to the park on a Saturday, um, you're going to see hundreds of kids running around having a lot of fun. So it's great. Um, we've got a lot of success stories that we can share. We've got athletes competing at JWAP. We get quite a lot of prizes at the British schools usually and we've won the Yvette Baker trophy for the last few years. <laughs> um, Jackie would be able to tell us exactly how many years we've done it. But and and we're always really friendly and welcoming at events or try to be anyway. Okay. So yeah the junior only competitions as we said we we will send out like a personal invitation to come and run for the club. Um, just because if it doesn't come out like that, it, people don't think it's necessarily for them. So we're making sure people know that they are invited, even if they've only done the Saturday series before. Um, we celebrate everyone, so it's not just the counters for the team, it's everybody. I think what's really good about things like the Yvette Baker and the British schools is that if you're not good enough to perhaps have success at one of the major events as an individual, um, you know, at the JK or the British, you can at the Yvette Baker, it's a lower level competition. So you're more, or and at the British School, so it's easier, the course is easier to, you can perhaps find it easier to win a medal, but also even if you don't win anything, you are part of a team. And if the team wins, then, you know, you're part of that success. Yeah. <clears throat> we found them just a really good way of encouraging juniors to move on from the Saturday series and the club night so if, if that's all they've done and they've never been to like an, an what I might call a normal event on a Sunday then getting them to travel to the British schools champs even if it's just up the road at Leeds is like the next step and it might just drive them on to and we more. found that parents are normally very supportive and prepared to drive miles if their kids are keen 
Um, and then we do the same with the other competitions. So it's not just the junior competitions. Um, we're quite lucky this year that we've got the JK relays on our doorstep and the British um, relays is in, in Yorkshire as well, quite a long way away, but it's in the school holidays. Uh, they're both in the school holidays for, um, for Sheffield. So we're, we're going to do a bit of a push on that, to, even if people aren't coming to the whole event, whether they'll come and make up a relay team. Um, we sort of subsidise the runs at relays and at the Sport Cup, so that helps. And we have got the JK in Sheffield next year, so this is like a stepping stone to get more people into that next year, hopefully. Okay. Um, so I think a lot of study that's been done about juniors in sport and why the dropout is that there's not a pathway for them if they're not an elite. Um, if they don't make the GB team, then there's nothing for them left in orienteering. And, and that's time they drop out. And I think we've tried really hard in SYO to make it inclusive for all juniors. Um, but we promote training and development to help 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 them get better um, as well. And there is something for them, you know, they can compete in local leagues, they can come to club night. Um, but for the ones that do want to progress, then um, we promote the Orchard squad. Um, and I think, the Orchard squad is only got four juniors that aren't in SYO um, in the full squad. There's some more associate members. Um, and we have 11 juniors in the GB squad. So um, the programme does support um, those who aren't interested in um, being a, an elite, but it does also help encourage and train um, those juniors that do want to compete at a high level. Um, the other thing we really try to do is encourage and trust our juniors um, to get involved in volunteering. If you come along to our Saturday series, it's quite often planned by a junior. Um, they run the SI, um, they run, they're on the start, um, and they're selling cakes. Um, you know, they're doing all aspects of the event, and, and we think that's really important. And we run training courses to train them up to do volunteering. Um, one of the things we also really do is try to support SHUOC. Um, it's really, really hard for university clubs to get off the ground and to keep going. Um, there's not many really successful uni clubs and so we see that as really important. So every the, the committees change every single year um, on a uni club. So there's new people coming in and we're there to offer support, advice, loan equipment, training opportunities, permissions, maps, lifts, all sorts of things. Um, but it's not it is it's not just one way, it's it's a two-way street. So there's lots of benefits to SYO. If they come along to our event. Um, then that's lots of young adults there um, racing around, which provide is a good role model for our old teens. Um, they'll volunteer at our events and we give them free runs. And um, at our event at Burbage, you know, they were there doing uh, road crossings, all the unpopular jobs, and they collected all the controls at the end. That was all down to show up, which we were so grateful for. So if you, you can get the benefit back by supporting your uni club. Um, and um, we they've even planned and organised events um, in return for a share of the profits, which worked very well for us and them. OK, so I just want to um, share our membership profile. All right. Now, as you can see, um, we've got a very big peak um, in juniors. Um, we have don't have that same peak in old people. Um, and we have 145 junior members and our peak is in 11 to 12 years. We've got 36 members. Now, like um, nationally for orienteering and like the profiles of all sports, there's a big drop off in the teenage years. Um, uh, we do still have 60 members aged 15 to 20, which is great, but there is, you know, that drop off. So I thought it'd be useful to have a look at why juniors leave. Okay, so these are some of the well-known reasons why juniors leave 
um, orienteering and sport in general. Academic, well, you can see academic pressures focuses on different sports, other interests, priorities. Now, um, there's some things we can influence and some things we can't. OK, we can't. If somebody want, is leaving because they want to focus on uh, their studies or because their focus is a different sport, um, we can't do anything about those. But there are things that we can influence in orienteering, and 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 those are the things we that we need to do as clubs. So providing social opportunities, improving the image of the sport, helping uh, uni clubs, and making sure that we've got. Uh, opportunities for social for, for low level um, non pressurized orienteering okay uh, so local leagues club competitions team competitions um, improving the image and sharing uh, helping lifts sharing transport all those sort of things help retain our older juniors um, you know, those 60 juniors that we've got aged um, 15 to 20, um, it's much harder to attract juniors um, as they get older. It's not impossible, but it is harder. It's much easier to try and retain them um, and keep them in in, in your club. Um, and, that, and so that socialising and no pressure orienteering can really help that. Okay, so at club night last night, we asked our juniors why they like being a member of SYO and why they uh, like club night. Um, and you can have a read through, give you a moment to read through those um, reasons that they gave. Um, but I think what comes out is um, how important socializing and friends are um, and obviously there's the opportunity to do the orienteering that they enjoy and to get better at it but the social side really comes out I think um, and also of course the chance to win chocolate as prizes okay so what next for us um I watched um oh god I think a year is so again, maybe two, uh, a presentation by someone in Scottish orienteering. And one of the um, things they talked about in that was incentive schemes. And they shared some incentive and um, award schemes or reward schemes. Um, and I think that would be something that would be quite interesting to do to, to uh, for children to collect stamps or something and get something for mastering different skills or attending different types of events. And um, so we might look at that. Um, we're very Sheffield focused. All our members in Sheffield, much of our activities in Sheffield. Um, so we want to try and do a bit more in Rotherham um, to encourage some development of the sport there. Uh, we need to get better at sharing info with new parents it's quite, orienteering is quite a complicated sport and um it's very hard to understand all the opportunities and we had a we, we ran a question and answer session last night actually out of, as out of me writing this presentation it was oh hang on let's just do it so we did and jenny yeah. did, led that session so we had probably about 15 parents all of whom the kids just do the Saturday series and the club night. They've maybe been to one or two other SYO events. And it was really interesting. And it did did think, did think make me think anyway that we need to do a few of them and make them focused. So something, a lot of them want to know more about the math symbols and the control description symbols. The parents want to know that. Um, and so that they can talk through the maps with the kids and have a go themselves. And then there was a lot of questions about which colour should they be running, which age class are they? Um, and which events should we be going to? There seem to be so many. People that maybe do fell running and are used to sort of an annual calendar always looking the same, getting really confused by orienteering. So, um, but people were really, really keen to know more. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, and they'll learn from each other as well. So that was quite nice to get them together. Um, and the other thing was, um, you know, 
yes, our Saturday series is really successful and yes, our club night is really successful, but it's still quite hard to encourage people to come to the regional events on a Sunday and despite us encouraging them. Um, so they, they ran, a lot of them came and gave the Yorkshire champs uh, a try last Sunday on Berger because there was a reason for that. There was a prize given there were prizes and that we did get a good turnout there. But it's um, we need to make our regional events a bit more attractive, I think, and give people a reason to attend them. So our summary of what successful junior development looks like. It's got to be inclusive, uh, fun. Uh, it's really important to focus on the whole family. Um, get the adults orienteering, teach them what to do, encourage them to join, get them volunteering, um, because um, the child is more likely to stay in the support of the whole sport if the whole family take part. Uh, be very welcoming, lots of socialising opportunities and give everybody a chance to uh, so is to, to have success, if, if not individually, but as part of a team. Um, and it's really good to collaborate with other organisations. We get a lot of support. Sheffield City Council are really supportive of us because we've worked with them for so long. School sports partnerships, same. Um, you know, they, they really help us promote the sport and allow us to um, successfully deliver all activities with minimal land access charges as well uh, and I think the key thing to remember is it's a really long process and things work not but not everything works and um, you know it takes a long while to get good results okay and that's it any questions Excellent. Thank you so much both for that, that brilliant presentation. It's uh, it's advertising very well that I might have to uh, make a trip to Sheffield quite soon <laughs> and see and see all of it for myself. Um, in terms of the Q&A, um, we had one, uh, we, we had a comment along the way and I think I'd like to phrase phrase it sort of, I guess, into the into a question. So obviously, you know, the discussion is we had sort of, you know, the feedback, on, you know, and from the club nights and you know, just sort of, I guess, could you just tell us a, a bit more again about, you know, like how, how the club night is, you know, mm -hmm. such a positive reason alongside those other reasons that people may start orienting the curiosity, that sort of thing. Okay, yeah. so they start, they come along orienteering because it looks like a fun activity in the park. Yeah, they see lots of other kids running around, their friends are coming and they want to be part of that. They enjoy it it's it's you know it's a bit of a fun it's mat reading it's being outdoors um and then they come along and they do a few of those events and then they want to get more involved in orienteering and most of the reason why people end up joining the club is because particularly the juniors we obviously we get people joining who are who are not new juniors through um our schools league but the vast majority of people who come along are juniors that want to learn to get better at orienteering and but they want to be come along with their friends and have fun at club night and we um yeah so i'm just reading the comment club night can't possibly be a reason for uh -huh. newcomers i think it is people want to learn the skills and practice the skills and have fun orienteering so yeah that's why they join the club yeah and we do have some people at club night that can't come on a saturday like they actually do something else on saturday so club night is the orienteering that they do until we get them to do another event um but lots of people look for act evening activities for their kids and uh, particularly kids that maybe don't get on in team sports and things and orienteering I often um, recommend it on Facebook groups when people are saying like I want my kid to be active but you know team sports aren't for them I, I say oh you know there's orienteering come on to club night so we do we even get people that don't really orienteer that come to club night um, and then the the the, the people come along and the parents bring them and then the parents see other adults doing club night and they say oh can I join in because they're there anyway and we say yeah and then we're teaching them the skills and encouraging them to enjoy orienteering yeah excellent and that's I think that's something that 
that, that most people who've grown up with sport can relate to is seeing the other kids doing it and instantly thinking, I've got to go. I've got to have a go. Yeah. So that's perfect. Um, <laughs> the, the follow up question uh, from Ian is asking how many people help organise club nights and what is the population of Sheffield, which I have Googled from the 2019 <laughs> census. And according in 2019, it says 584,028. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. Um, how many people, so I, I basically, part, part of the development role in SYO is the running of club night. And I'd say probably I spend a good day a week pulling it all together. Because with about 130 people that attend on and off and getting them all signed up and administrated that takes quite a lot of time and then I've got to plan get permissions for plan all the activities prepare all the resources um and uh then uh, uh, yeah get everyone involved who is going to help but we have how many coaches that do we have two per group and we've got nine groups yeah, yeah. so yeah about 18 people that help Brilliant. Wow. And uh, the, the follow up to that is uh, well, these questions are flying in. <laughs> is yeah. uh, is uh, Jeanette just asking, so how many club nights can people attend before joining the club? So three. Yeah. So the British Orienteering in, in, Insurance says that you can join, uh, you can be a member, yeah, have uh, attend three activities before you need to join. Um, so most people, um, tend to say oh I want to, to come along to club night I'll join the club and join straight away but sometimes people want to try it out and stand to be first so we we let, we let them come to a couple and then we'll say oh you know you need to you know now you need to join the club we encourage them to join the club um, and they do how Excellent. do you ensure the right people are involved to volunteer um so we asked all our Saturday series, our volunteers get a free run. And I ask um, people to let me know if they can help. And then I allocate the rotors. Um, and I put the people, I fit the people to the jobs. So um, perhaps if they're not so um, welcoming and chat, find, don't find chatting and being um, explaining things easy, then perhaps I'll say, that they would suggest they control collect or um, go on the SI doing the computers. Um, so I, I, I try and fit people to the role. Um, I have our most chatty and welcoming people on um, <laughs> meet and greet. Um, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, that's an interesting point as well is you know that fitting people into the jobs because that's it's one of the the most difficult things is you know getting trying to get the best out of your volunteers as well so that's a really it's a really interesting point yeah. and, and the thing is it's it, you know it, it doesn't matter if you're not really chatty and can you want to cope you know there's lots of people who say oh god keep me away from the crowds those people are needed you know parking or on a road crossing or um collecting controls you know you still need those people but don't put them in the wrong job <laughs> very careful about where i match pe matching people to the right role yeah brilliant um the next question is from judith which is it looks from the outside as though you've reached a critical mass which keeps people coming how would you recommend to reach that sort of critical mass in a less populated area yeah, and I, I mean, I really appreciate that we are very lucky in Sheffield. Um, it's got an active, very active population, and the demographic that's really keen are um, NHS workers and um, university workers. That every almost every email I get is has one of those has one of those email addresses. So, <laughs> you know, I do appreciate that our um, demographic makes it easy for us however um i think that you need to start small and keep him in a very small familiar area and not try and drag people off to lots of different places and focus on a, on, on a small area um 
initially because we cover the whole of South Yorkshire, Barnsley, Rotherham, Doncaster and Sheffield, but actually all our effort is focused on Sheffield because that's where we can achieve this. Um, now, as I said, we hope to do a bit more in Rotherham, but um, it, it's just w pick somewhere where you think the demographic might work and focus on that one specific area. And I don't think you need to have as many people as we've got um, to make it successful. I don't think it needs to be that that up to that level. So, um, but I, I think, you know, if you've got 100 people coming in a less populated area, that'd be really successful. I think as well, if you've got a couple of schools where there are kids coming from those schools, um, or just a family with kids at school that maybe not, maybe they already orienteer, trying to have some sort of incentive so that they will bring more people from their school is really helpful. Because I've, I mean, my son's just finished junior school last year, but we've got um, two, just two uh, families from that school who'd never orienteered before, but came because we encouraged them, who are now doing club night and their parents uh, either entering um, badge events or um, helping at Saturday series, you know, so that's just from like one kind of traditional orienteer at the school. So if you can help, any orienteers you do have to try and get their friends and I know so my dad runs the club night um for Ebor in York and they are really struggling with juniors um but they they run it out of a school so they're just kind of trying to focus on yeah one of the local schools near there because they've got one one family that orienteer with a boy at the secondary school boy at the primary school and they're just really trying to push particularly the younger one to bring some friends along they really encouraged them to go to the British schools as a team and they got medals and then they managed to persuade them to enter the British Relay Champs because it's at Whitby so um yeah, yeah they're just trying just to expand that group you know just starting with one family and trying to expand it so we'll see how that goes yeah thanks Ian um I uh, that's really good cool. I'll have a look at what FBO do that's quite interesting uh does <laughs> it's not no, it does. It does. Orienteering does focus in the PE curriculum. Um, I do quite a lot of work in schools to put permanent courses into orienteering schools um, and then provide them with resources and train up teachers to use orienteering. It's quite popular. Again, sports partnerships have been really um, effective at promoting that side of things. Having, having said that, though, High Star School, which we use and which has um a lot of really good orienteers go into it now and um, my son's in year seven he was supposed to do orienteering this winter and all they did for orienteering was they had you probably don't know this Pauline they had a sheet of paper with photos of things they could see from the playing field and they had to run around and try and find them and like write down what color the window was or what shape the clock was and so they didn't even use the map that we use for club night you know they didn't yeah so if High Stores is not doing it, I think. And then I, I spoke to another girl at Club Night last night and her school, they're rebuilding the sixth form. So they were supposed to do orienteering last week, which she was really looking forward to because she was like, oh, I'll be able to do this. Like all those kids that can play hockey and can play football, like this is going to be my thing. Um, and then they didn't do it because of the building because they couldn't work out how to change the course. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't think the orienteering in school is happening helping massively but I think the sports partnership and the school's events that Pauline runs definitely help. Yeah, yeah stag yeah well that's it you know I, I do do a reasonable amount of work in pri particularly in primary schools in Sheffield. I do have a, a little plug in between the next question uh, but just on the topic of schools you can go back on the development conference playlist and look at the uh, session on schools we had with Sean Dowling from the uh, Academy Trust, which is really good, and uh, just have to get a look at that. <laughs> uh, what would you do to advise clubs to make regional events more family friendly? Yeah, well, you saw that we've not cracked that one yet. Um, uh, I, I'll say something though, because we we talk about um, split starts, and it's something we said last night at the question and answer. How great it is because you can have split starts, and I. As somebody that orienteers and my husband orienteers and then I've got an 11 year old who's been to a lot of orienteering events with us over the last 11 years, I do not like split starts. <laughs> I mean, yeah, obviously they 
they exist for a reason but spending the whole day in a muddy field is not what a toddler necessarily wants to do or a parent um so actually we've ended up trying to either pair up with another family or try and do, just do something so there's maybe somebody there that's not running or somebody we can leave him with while we both run so that we don't have to be there the whole day but I will say um I don't know if you've been to the White Rose Miss Dudson but I think we do it really well at the White Rose so that's an Ebor event that happens every year with a campsite obviously you can't do that every event um but there are activities for kids so not just there's like um a maze so they can like a string course a maze but there's also like games and things like that there's just a tent with things in which obviously people can bring themselves but if you have a sort of focal point where families can be I think um I think that's really helpful I haven't talked to SYO about it but I really want for the JK next year to maybe even like I don't know how it'll work with insurance but maybe pay some forest school people to come and do some stuff um like they do at the big events because I just think it's hard it's really hard to run a crash in a field in the UK you can't really do it but you don't have to run it like that you can still have responsible adults around but it might not be the parents you know it might just be another so some activities yeah yeah I think I think so no I, I, and as you say it is really difficult with one parent available you know I it was hard uh, but once my son was old enough once he got to 11 12 then he used to help look after his little sister um and we tried to not do full split starts but part split starts so one parent waited for my daughter to come back and then um and then we'd set off for the start so we weren't hanging around quite so long but you know it it is tricky and I think that's um but if they've got um friends to hang out with and um, that makes it easier so. yeah and that's where having the kit and having lots of juniors in the club really helps because people can <coughs> find their friends and find other families sorry <laughs> just talking yeah um sorry. but yeah it's it's really hard and I think remote starts and remote finishes make it extra difficult um a good thing we did at the Burbage event was we hired a building from the National Trust so we had an indoor space which was really good um you can't always do these things but I think if you if you just think like how would how would this work with a two-year-old and an eight-year-old or something like that you know would it work then yeah um you know we had we also had priority parking for that for the younger uh, families uh we do try really hard to think about making it as family friendly as possible it's not always possible but we do try quite hard on that Excellent. Thank you so much for that. And uh, I have noticed uh, Jackie has been uh, popping bits in the Q&A as well. So just in reference earlier to uh, obviously the club night stuff, the social thing, uh, once every four weeks, it's an actual event. So that's the introduction to real orienteering competition. And on the other note for juniors, try and enter all the junior competitions. Um, so those are the those are just the couple no. that are in there. Thanks, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> And cool. uh, I'll put out a sort of, I guess, a last call for any extra questions. Um, so feel free to pop them in the chat or the Q&A. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just reading yeah. Con Constance. Only 11 juniors. In the... No, no, but I think his point there is that yeah. actually yeah, out, of all the, out of 145 juniors, yeah only 11 of them are in the GB squad. So yeah, you've got to provide opportunities for all of the others, not just focus on them, which is what we tried to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's it's always competitive all the way from the top to the bottom as well. So that's, you know, especially for those spaces, it's junior development's always the, well, the biggest challenges and also one of the biggest rewards as well. So that's, it's, it's great to, you know, see all this work and hopefully that everybody can take something away from here as well. I feel like we should mention the like the history as well because a lot of the parents that come have orientated when they were kids you know so there were club development officers or probably volunteers doing this before and we are getting the benefit of that so all these kids that are coming to club night even if they stop orienteering for a while they are going to remember how fun it was and maybe bring their kids back in 20 years time or 30 years time yeah so when you see the juniors and young adults drop out the sport um in fact I was 
just like that. I stopped orienteering when I was 17 and came back when I was 30. So, you know, um, yeah, it doesn't matter if people drop out, they might come back. <laughs> I think some. I think I heard recently the the phrase you, you never quit orienteering. You just take a long break. Yeah, yeah. I think you know a lot of people do. Absolutely, and I can't see any extra questions in the Q and A or the chat. So on that note, I will bring things a little bit to a close. Thank you so much, both Pauline and Jenny, as well. That was fantastic fantastically informative session it's really nice to have a good interactive q a as well and just hear about all the brilliant work that you're doing um it's going to be it'll be really good to you know have this as as a resource as well for uh, clubs to come to and you know hopefully that's we'll see we'll see now maybe it might have to be a few years down the line but hopefully you know we'll see some of the outcomes of this ticking through as well um so i will quickly um, just before we go, so everybody um, who's attended tonight and everybody who registered, you should receive an email tomorrow afternoon with a link to the YouTube video of this session. If you're here tonight and want to watch it again, I'll applaud you, very keen. Um, but also that link, you know, can be shared around to uh, clubs, to anybody who wants to view that as well. If you do have any questions that you want to have answered, then feel free to drop either myself or Howard an email and on the feedback form there is a section for questions that you wish you'd have asked during the session um, so if you pop something in there then i can uh, get those passed on as soon as possible you can, um, share, you can share my email as yeah well. that's no problem yep i'll yep. Uh, pop that onto the email as well um, and as a final plug as we're coming into the last week of the development conference which has crept up very quickly um, the next session on Tuesday will be coaching what it takes to perform with British Orienteering's Tom Bray, which sounds like a very, very exciting session. I know I'll be there, um, but then I am here for all of them. Um, so thank you very much um, both again for the presentation. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending this evening and uh, have a good evening and uh, hopefully see you again soon. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. <laughs>